Hello and welcome back to Rambling Reviews, the ninth episode of this series. We're looking at book two of Infinity Train. This one is called The Tape Car, I assume. It's, 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 I think, if memory serves, the first season did this too, where the title of the last two episodes really kind of covered both across them, because they were in both cars, like, the, if memory serves, one of them was called, like, the engine, but, like, they got into the engine at the end of that episode, or the start of the next, and it was, like, sort of, the titles kind of covered both episodes, both parts, because they were such a interconnected story. I'm just trying to find the titles now. Confirm. Yeah, so the tape car and the number car, that's it. So we start in the tape car, but it feels like we move into the number car at the end of this one. But the next episode is called the number car. So I don't know, maybe there's another car. This is just the car where the tapes happen and they get their numbers, but there's a, the number decision-making process happens in another car. Or they end in the number car in this episode and they get the titles kind of cover both. Um, so yeah, um... But whew, what an episode! There's a lot. To, there's, there is a lot to discuss, but it's weird because like, the first time I watched it, I was like, I don't know, not much happens. This is kind of like set up. This is like laying the foundations for the final episode. Um, so I don't feel like I'm gonna have a lot to talk about, but I think I do. <laughs> I think there's a. I think there is a lot to talk about. As I made my notes on the second viewing, um, yeah, a lot came up. Worth adding that for me, there has been a huge gap. Um, so basically, a bunch of stuff got in the way. Um, how to explain? So uh, I'll just I'll say this. Basically, I got very busy out of nowhere, and <laughs> have ended up like a week and a half has passed between my last recording and this one to the point where yesterday my episode for the Wasteland went up and is out. <laughs> so I went from being so ahead that only a couple had released um, to being like <laughs> recording just a day or two before this goes up basically um which is a shame i was hoping to stay ahead but it doesn't really matter that i've sort of it's caught up to me in these last couple one second let me readjust readjust my mic slash wire there you go um it doesn't really matter that it's caught up to me in these last couple because i can i know i can record the last two before the uh they, they're due out so i won't i won't there won't be any delays in the release um so yeah, so the reason I say that is because I've actually had a comment on the previous episode that I want to address because it's actually talked about a little bit at the start of this episode, so it feels kind of perfect, and it was in my notes for this episode anyway. Uh, but somebody said, uh, keep in mind. Uh, so is, who's this? Uh, Cl uh, Clow Clowlers. Clow Clowlers. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, keep in mind that not all of the trains denizens might believe they're oppressed or think the same way MT does. Some denizens seem content in how they're living. Uh, the ethical issue is the train brings isn't fully explored in this book, but it might if a third happens. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I kind of... I, I thought I'd covered that in, in the previous episode, that I understand that not everyone's going to want to get off the train. But the problem is, you've opened that can of worms now, and, I, and you can't assuage my concerns... I don't mean you specifically, uh, commented, but I just mean the show can't assuage my concerns by simply saying, well, a lot of them want to stay here. You know, uh, not knowing about your oppression is not, <laughs> does not make your oppression okay. Um, and, and as well, it's hard, you know, you're never going to be able to convince me as a show that all of the denizens of the train are happy where they are. I mean, the very fact MT exists suggests many others do feel that way as well um they do at the start of this episode and the reason i wanted to bring that comment up right up top is because um alan dracula they they use him as a at the start of this episode as sort of a way to try and sort of assuage that concern uh and it, it didn't quite work for me it, it's a it's a good moment where she basically says to alan dracula hey look i, I know this is your home and you're happy here but i i don't want to be here and the idea is exactly what the what that you know what that uh, comment was getting at the idea that well not everybody wants to leave 100 percent true absolutely but he doesn't have a choice it doesn't matter if he wants to or doesn't want to he can't leave and that suppression, you know, um, it's 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 a, it's a broken system. 
if these beings, as Tulip is insisting, are people, they have the right to make choices for themselves, and the train isn't giving them that. Um, so it is a system of oppression still, and you, 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 by opening that can of worms, I don't know how, <laughs> beyond fully tackling it in like a book three or book four, like and actually going down that route, I really don't know how you, you close that can back up again in in anything that isn't doesn't feel like a half measure. Um, so yeah, because it, it just you know it's it's it really doesn't matter what they want. If Alan Dracula changed his mind tomorrow, as a free being and decided he did want to leave he wouldn't have he doesn't have a choice that very system doesn't consider any being on the train worthy of a number or leading their own life um and he'll never get the chance to make that choice for himself um and the people who live on the train do deserve the right to choose how they wish to live you know rather than being controlled by the train and again while i don't agree with everything he said mace did bring up another good point which is the train does sort of use them to help the people on their way they're almost slaves to the humans because they seem to only exist to help people on their journeys rather than for their own purposes. And again, some might be happy with that role, but it's uh, it's a little bit like the uh, the, the house elves in um, in Harry Potter. It's like you know they they've been conditioned to believe that their way of life is right and normal and acceptable, and that they're happy. But the reality is, they don't have a choice <laughs> um and it's not it's not about changing their mindsets necessarily um it's about giving them the option and then over time maybe some of them will start to, you know some of the ones that do want freedom will take it you know it's, it's it's about um creating an environment where they can make those choices for themselves and also the systems that have convinced people that this is okay need to be and that's what's great about you know i really love the one thing i love about the harry potter books is there's a system of oppression in place. There's slavery essentially going on. And what JK does, and uh, other issues with her aside at the moment, I'm just going to put her in a in a little box so I can talk about her work and f throw her other... Well, just her in a bin somewhere. What's great about the book, though, is that she, there's this system of um, oppression created and all of the characters, including our most beloved characters... Like, you know, your Hagrid's, your Harry's, your Ron's are all just, they've all just accepted it. And I think, I think some people have read that as, oh, you know, oh, everyone, but everyone just perceives Hermione as naive. So obviously she's, you know, the book sort of presents her as being wrong about this. Actually, no, I think it presents everyone else as being wrong very clearly. And what it presents is that even the, the best of intentioned people can get sucked into that those kind of mindsets in the into sucked into those kind of belief systems where they've been conditioned to think everything's fine think about all the people who seem really surprised at black lives matter like this hasn't been a problem for <laughs> hundreds of years <laughs> like it's it, it's crazy to me that when this the, you know every time this comes back up um because you know there's another police shooting or some other issue that's cropped up there are always people who seem surprised to discover racism is still an issue. And I think that's kind of actually way ahead of its time in terms of the Harry Potter books. What JK was getting at with the with the oppression of those house elves is that all of the characters were under the impression that it was a, it was a good system and that they were happy. They, they weren't seeing it for what it is. And by the end of the book, they do start to see that Ron and Harry both start to change, you know, their opinion on it. You know, um, Ron particularly shows real uh, a real passionate shift there in terms of how that's so. And I, and I think so. I think when you get into this issue of like systems of oppression and stuff, it's really tricky because it's very easy to get into a mindset of oh, people are happy that way. Are they? <laughs> you don't. You you don't. You don't know. And also, not having the choice means you'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It it's irrelevant. You've made it irrelevant how they feel, and that's the problem. You know, um, that's how I see it anyway. So, so I think that um, when well, you're looking at the situation here, now they've opened that can. I really need them to deal with it at some point. I don't necessarily need them to deal with it this this season. Um, I think this season needs to keep focusing on Tulip and her journey um, rather than the wider issues that, that raises. Although they may cover some of that in the conclusion to her journey, I still want to see. 
I, I still want to see one one make changes to the way this system is and works as a result of tulips journey um it may not be the solution but i want to see progress starting to happen and and, and stuff um so yeah there's a, there's a lot going on um and it's really complicated obviously these issues are not simple at all they're very they're extraordinarily um detailed and i and i hope that it's that you know i'm not just reading into this too much and that like I'm not just the crazy guy going like I think it's about this when it really it's not. But I, I really do think this is this was intentional stuff. So yeah, I, I I think that you know these are issues they were genuinely trying to tackle with an eye on the real world. You know. Um, so yeah, the uh, it's uh, oh god, I don't know if I've explained any of what I've just said well. By the way, I've, I f I feel like I feel like I've sort of incoherently babbled rather than articulated correctly but that's that's the nature of a podcast like this where i just sort of watch the episode and then talk for half an hour um uh, so let's break down the episode anyway um with that all that you know the first sort of oh god 10 minutes of me rambling about oppression um b behind us um loved the uh alan dracula on a, as a hood ornament gag um got some questions about tulips choices here in this episode but we'll come to those together i normally go through the episode chronologically but she makes two choices three in this episode that i'm i have questions about uh mirror tulips very empty um and we're going to come back to that uh yeah a little bit later we'll, we'll go through some of the details first um so i loved alan Dracula as a hood ornament um i loved the train documentaries oh i didn't agree cat the episode for those who don't remember this episode um starts with tulip um talking alan Dracula as we just discussed Saying, oh, you might be happy here, but I, I need to. I, I want to be able to get out. Uh, a pod comes along. They hijack it. They get into the tape car where people's tapes are being sort of pulled from their brains, then disseminated into what is their number, basically. Um, and then there's a machine that assigns it to them. Um, MT tries to steal someone's number, essentially, by putting her hand in between the the, the, the machine that sort of like lasers it on and the, the hand of the person who's receiving it. But it just goes right through her and gives them it anyway. She loses her temper. Um, yelling, I have a person, I deserve a number. She breaks stuff. And uh, then the surprise reveal that well, the steward shows back up, all fa face mask all repaired from having been broken in the previous season. And then it was revealed that it's it's 1 1 is inside the head this now, which is which is really cool. Um, absolutely loved that. Yeah. Uh, just great way to end an episode. Just please stop destroying our stuff. Um, yeah, there's a there's a, the, the 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 tease for where this goes now. I'm very exciting. Anyway, so let's break it down. So yeah, love the train documentaries. When she's in that car, she's getting little train documentaries, and then they observe, they acknowledge that the tape is only going to be played while people are sleeping, and it's actually more for one one than anyone else. <laughs> Such a good joke. Um, I love it. Um, they do also reference Atticus. Um, I like that they're so boring they put empty to sleep <laughs> um, until she reaches their destination um, when she gets into the tape car um, we're immediately struck by the visuals I think uh, they're trippy and unusual but also very consistent with the other images we've seen of this train's technology I particularly like the duck bots which is what I've dubbed them they've got sort of like these backsides that stick out and they sort of waddle and they've got these long necks and these heads that look like, yeah they're duck bots they're giant ducks in my opinion <laughs> they're great they're really cool I, I again they're very in line with the train's other aesthetics but they do feel really original too and that is the that is true of this whole episode actually all the aesthetics are just pinpoint like exactly in line with the train's previous <coughs> excuse me <coughs> in line with the train's previous looks but still all completely feel interesting and unique and unusual. And you, you get so drawn in just like, what is, you know, what is this? What is that? Like you just, yeah, you really do. I don't know how they did that, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, make it all feel so familiar and like, oh yeah, that's exactly what that should look like. But at the same time, I'm going, ooh, that's how they get the tapes. Like, yeah, visually really interesting. There's this part where she gets to this like smog filled lake and there's all these like, like, things coming out of the ground these long lines and they're just sort of waving up into the air like on wind almost 
and then you just what are these and then we realize that basically there's people's heads are in the ground and the tapes are being fed out of them by these little tiny microscopic bots that look like one ones which I thought was really cute. Little baby one ones feeding the tape out of their brain. And then there's this, the duck, one of the duck bots comes along, basically eats the tape and then does some processing. And then I guess decides what the number should be for that person. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where like, if you'd have asked me to describe the process, I wouldn't have probably come up with that, but that's absolutely the right thing. That's, that's, that's exactly what it should be. Like my, I just immediately went, yep, cool. That's how that works. Yeah, makes sense. Like, I do, it's just very natural. It's a, it's a very organic um, evolution of the technology we've seen on the train previously. And I think the way that they visualized it actually made an episode which is, I mean, rather thin on plot, really engaging. And I don't mean that as necessarily as a criticism. You're, you're totally allowed to make a choice to be thin on plot in one episode. You know, it's a, you know, it's. Uh, it's like a song making a choice to go without vocals. Like sometimes an instrumental is a really powerful way to like bring an album together, you know? <laughs> um, so I'm thinking that last section of that Muse album with the Butterflies and Hurricanes, Absolution. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent, but Butterflies and Hurricanes and Absolution, the last section that is just insane. Vocalless, but just very powerful. So yeah, they've made a choice here to go very thin on plot and like, just, and the aesthetics are what they've sort of been able to spend more time exploring um and it, it's great for it it's a really it's a really engaging piece of television and it flies by i've watched it twice now and like it just it, it's over before it feels like it's even began i'm just like like the, i've got to tell you guys the temptation to watch the final episode but i've i i have to i have to just no, it's really I, that has been actually. I'll tell you that the, the the worst part of doing these rambling reviews has been the the fact it's made me pace myself because I know I can only record one or two of these before I sort of like I sort of die on my feet and then they're like um, they they get somehow even worse than this <laughs> in terms of like the rambling and the the, the incohesive you know the incoherent sort of babbling that I do. Um, <laughs> So it's it's much worse when I when I record a couple of them, believe it or not, and uh, so I so I have to pace myself. I have to do one, maybe two a day, and then like wait a day or two, and then come back to it. Otherwise, I do, I sort of burn out really quickly, um, and I find it harder to gather my thoughts. Um, so yeah, the, the there these are uh, this episode's. Uh, you know, I had to I've wait, I already waited a week and a half to watch it, and then I'm watching it, and I'm like, oh my god. Like, I just want to watch the next one so much. That's been the hardest part of this whole series. Like, every single episode I've wanted to watch the next one. And it's really not been helped by the series having that structure where every so many episodes they do, like, one that leads directly into another. Like, the Apex one into last week's one and this one into the one after it. Come on, man. Stop doing that to me. That Owen. That Owen Dennis. What's frustrating me now is I've sort of created a pattern here where when Infinity Train Book 3 comes out, I'm probably going to have to do the same thing instead of just watching it. <laughs> and I'd really like to just watch it. Anyway, we'll come to that when, it, when we come to that. But um, that is assuming a book three happens. Oh, while well, we're here, feel free to go check these out on uh, HBO Max. If you want to support Infinity Train, uh, watch along with me. Uh, I'm only on the last two now, but hey, helps apparently. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um, so I, one thing I noticed that when we got into the sort of smoggy tape filled liquid stuff where the tapes are emerging from the people's brains and stuff there are a lot more people on this train than i realize now i realize it's called infinity train so there are infinite carriages um i understand that it's fucking a lot of people though isn't it <laughs> like it's a huge number of people and you so because uh, and what shocks me about it i think and the reason it shocks you i should say is because obviously you've got these we followed tulip and jesse uh, and Mira Tulip on these journeys and they don't bump into other humans that often it's 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 rare and like there are th hundreds of these folks <coughs> on this train I, thousands like it's it's it seems to go on and on it seems like they're just churning them through like a factory <coughs> it's kind of amazing these people don't bump into each other more often um <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, still recovering from illnesses of, of which I have had several in the last few weeks. Um, 
So yeah, there are a lot more people on the train than I realized. I don't know, like, what that... I don't think it tells me anything other than that the train must be huge. That these people aren't... That these people are avoiding each other. Or the train is moving the carriages a lot more than where you're aware. So, like, if someone's in a carriage and the next one along, there's someone in. They're moving them around so the people avoid each other. Um, so if there's an empty carriage, they put that next. Because they can go up and along and down. Although if that's the case, I feel like we'd see a bit more of that when we see it from the outside for extended periods of time. Like in the Wasteland episode, several shots of it. You don't see any of the train carriages like zipping along, I guess. Because it would draw your attention. You'd be like, what's happening there? Uh, I don't know. But yeah, that must be what's happening. That must be how it works. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Um... We get one particular sort of character we end up following a little bit through her memories. This uh, this young girl who had uh, some sort of incident with a bearded dragon. And I say some sort of incident because all I wanted to know was what did this poor girl do exactly to this bearded dragon? So we see three little clips. We see one of her being at the pet store being like, I want that one. It's like, okay, cool. Sweet. She, she likes the bearded dragon. She's got like a T-Rex t-shirt on, which is a nice little touch. Because you're like, oh, she likes, like, di she likes dinosaurs. So bearded dragon's a perfect pet for a kid who's into like lizards and dinosaurs and stuff. Cool. Next uh, next cl clip is her happily with it. She's trying to put a big rock in the in its thing, but nowhere near it. Like it's, it's, it's in like the corner and the bearded dragon's in the other corner. And the mum's like, do you know how to hand with that? And she's like, no, I got it. And the next shot is is brutal and heartbreaking. It's the bearded dragon's like on the ground, it's like tongue like hanging out, it's like obviously dead, like on its back. And the girl is crying, and the mum's like, what did she say? She says something like I can't remember what she's but the implication being that she didn't mean to, but like to hurt it, but obviously because she didn't get her mum's help, so whatever she did, something went wrong. But what? What happened to this poor dragon? I mean, I don't want the gory details, but like, I, d I can't imagine how it went from... Did she just not feed it properly? Is it that? Or, uh, I d did she drop the rock on it? I, d I, I don't know. It looks pretty... Yeah. No visible injury, but it's ups it's on its back. Its tongue's hanging out in a bleh, sort of way. Ah, it's horrible. It's, it's a really uncomfortable video. It's supposed to be. That's absolutely by design, and they do a wonderful job putting that together. You get so much... It's funny how, in such very brief flickers of this person's life, uh, you get so much information. You, like, it's, it's, it's really easy to discern this person's character, their problem, you know, their inability to accept help. You know, you, it's, the true genius of this show is how brilliant they are at communicating stuff. I feel like they weren't... I and mean, it's obviously a nature, it's the nature of me doing this the way I do this, which is obviously by, you know, sort of watching an episode twice, making notes the second time, and then coming in, like, having really analysed it and talking about it for 30 minutes, which forces you to really think about the, the content. But I will say uh, that the, like, in the first episode, the second episode, I was sort of making pretty reasonably strong guesses on Jesse's problem and what he might need to do on the train, and what he might be on the train for, that turned out to be reasonably accurate. Uh, you know, about being a people pleaser and stuff. I think it was from the second episode, the, the, the family tree car. And the reason I can do that is not because I'm in any way, like, ahead of the show. The sh no, the show is very good at feeding you information in tiny bits. I felt really pleased that I put that together, but that's just how good this show is at giving you little bits of information. Um, and it allows you to put those pieces together yourself uh, rather than force feeding you the you know the final picture they, they they hand you the jigsaw and you sort of get to put it together and you put it together quickly if you want or you can take your time with it, it doesn't really matter you'll get that though because the show is just very good at laying that stuff in and this is another example of that um, so yeah that's thing that's that's uh, I don't know what I don't know what she did to the bearded dragon, but I, I understand her plight and I understand her her issue and the suggestion that she, by not accepting her mother's help, by wanting to do everything by herself, that may have been what led to the, the this 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 bearded dragon's death. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting, uh, and I'm, I uh, I think that's a really it's really cool that they managed to um, incorporate all that in such a short space of time. Wow, I've been talking for 25 minutes. Uh, 
how have I managed that? Well, maybe not 25 minutes, what are we, 20, 24, something like that. Too many minutes um, to have not gotten to one of my bigger points, but we'll come to that in a second. I uh, like the way these tapes work. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's really cool that they, 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 they come out of the brain and this machine sort of eats them up and makes a judgment and decides what numbers to give them. Um, but let's talk about, let's talk about MT. <coughs> We've covered pretty much everything else. This is the big one, so let's talk about it. I have some reservations about the morality and the choices of this character. Um, last week, she killed someone and looked uh, like almost satisfied with the choice to do that. Uh, like this sort of grim, this, this grim satisfaction. And I was concerned about that. Then, she makes two very morally questionable choices in this episode too, in my opinion. Um, and maybe they're going to address that. Maybe they're going to address that. But, it's a selfish choice number one. She throws the old guy out of his pod to get what she wants. He's now stranded on the top of a train. We've established there's no way into the roofs of those trains unless you're either brought up there with a grappling hook system or you turn your legs into springs like Alan Dracula and spring up or if you remember the cat had that pod to travel on the tops of the trains. What's happening to that guy? He's just stuck on there. And it's played for a joke, I understand. And Tulip sort of goes, oh wait, as he runs away from Alan Dracula who looks terrifying. But it doesn't change the fact that she, like, essentially pulled him out of his pod and abandoned him. She doesn't really make much effort there. Oh, no, wait, and he's run away. Okay, I guess he's off then. Like, she should have she should have followed him. She should have made sure he was okay, got him to the ground, set him up before. And I know that you're like, oh, damn, pacing-wise, that would screw this episode over. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It really would. But do something else then. Have her ride with him. Like, have her break it open, sneak into it, and it's like, we'll return, you know, he stays asleep, and, uh, you, you know, and have her go with him. Like, how or, or lie on top of it until they get to the, the car. Like, you don't need to have her... He doesn't need to be thrown out and stranded like that. Um, and she seems quite comfortable when he runs off, just go, cool, and then gets in his pod and takes it back to where she needs to go. Um, so she's making an absolutely selfish choice there. Um, then the number thing, and this one is way worse. Way worse. She absolutely deserves the choice to be able to leave this car. But stealing someone else's number is not the way to go about it. Because that is stealing someone else's choice. Now it doesn't work... But she doesn't know that. And she even rationalizes it on camera for us. She says, oh, um, um, she basically says her need is more than the, like, oh, I need it more than you do. You know, her need is greater than that of the, the, the lizard girl, the girl whose who's bearded dragon died. But, what, like, you, who are you to deem your need greater? You can't take from others, like, that's... Stepping on someone else to get what you want is selfish and absolutely not the way to solve any version of inequality. And I think what the show is going for here is sometimes you've really got to mess stuff up to, to buck a system like this. You've really got to get in there and destroy this system from the inside. But I just think you've got to be careful not to make sure that you're not just transferring your oppression, <laughs> you know. Um, and that's what she would have been doing. She'd have been she'd have been dooming this poor girl to be trapped on the train. Essentially, if 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 it had worked, the number had gone on MT and not her. She'd just be stuck on the train forever. And if you say, well, maybe not. Maybe there's this and that. MT definitely doesn't know for sure what happens. And the logical explanation, if you don't have a number, is that you don't get off the train. That's the lo like, that is the, by far, any reasonable, rational person would go, well, if you've got a number, you can get off. If you don't have a number, probably not. 
That's the most likely explanation for that. And even if you don't think it's the most likely explanation, it's definitely one. It's definitely a strong possibility or just a possibility. So even if MT only thought it was a twenty percent chance or a ten percent chance that that girl was never going to be able to get off that train, she was still making that choice. I really hope that the next episode one one makes MT face up to some of the choices she's made here. Because when we started this season, we established she was making choices for herself, selfish choices. Jesse was making choices for others, for the benefit of others. And that they could learn something from each other. But MT is now making choices at the expense of others. And that's different. It's one thing to look after yourself, but it's not. It's another thing to do it the way that it's been done here. Uh, where you're, you're costing someone else. Now, it doesn't work, um, and then everything from there is just incredible. Um, you know, uh, oh, and if you're wondering, Dawa, story-wise, how do they do it otherwise? Well, how does, why not, does she not just put a hand under it, like, prior to Anna? I suppose it would only activate when it's waiting to do someone else's number. I don't know, she should have tried to find another way around it. Uh, but, I, yeah, there's, uh... You're right, from a story perspective, we have to discover that the train's not going to give her a number. The only way to do that is to have her to try to steal someone's number, but I don't like the way she rationalizes it at all. Um, it's problematic for me. Um, and they haven't handled her willingness to murder here either, which I'm hoping comes up in the next episode, because self-defense or not, she did kill someone on her quest for freedom. You know, what about that person's freedom? Um... You know, she's determined she's a person, but if she's a person, then so was that agent when she gladly pushed him under her wheel. Anyway, um, so yeah, this whole I'm a person, I deserve a number thing when she's trashing the place is just one of the most epic moments. It's, it's, it's what this should have been. To be honest with you, maybe that's the answer. Maybe she gets there, realizes there's no way for her to get a number without either taking it from someone or like, because these machines are literally ignoring her and she just starts trashing the place. That, you know, she, she realizes I'm not going to just take someone else's, but you guys won't even acknowledge me, let alone give me one. So she starts getting angry and trashing the place. You've got the same story beats, but less morally questionable decision making. But this part is super powerful. It is it is somebody frustrated with a system breaking it down, bringing it down around her ears. It's incredible that she just starts smashing stuff, you know, uh, yelling, I am a person, I deserve a number. Ashley Johnson does a wonderful job here. In fact, Ashley Johnson kills it in this episode. We, you know, for those who don't know, in this episode, she voices um, MT, um the the little girl and her mom that's crazy <laughs> that's insane um she's the little girl the mom and mt in this episode she does a really good job um and i think owen oh, dennis does obviously he does sad one and he does um he also does uh the passenger at the beginning the old man and then obviously jerry country comes back as glad one um but the, the yeah the uh Ashley Johnson's performance on that line, um, I'm a person, I deserve a number, is just the power and the emotion of her behavior here is just the acts of, especially the, the, the tears combined with destruction as a visual, it's so powerful. And you truly believe her frustration and disappointment and anger and every feeling she's feeling in that moment so thoroughly. It's so well done. Now, the episode on the whole, I loved. I mean, there's so much to love about this episode, from the aesthetics to that very powerful ending, um, getting to see all the trades of the surprise of one, the, 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 the way they managed to give us this entire story for this little girl in two seconds, where you understand so much about her and her life. My concerns about the, the morality of Tulip's choices are not yet criticisms. Not yet. If the next episode, MT is forced to reckon 
with her choices to get her freedom. Like the people who, like the humans who visit the train, dealing with their poor choices. You know, um, Jesse threw his little brother under the bus. That was not a morally, you know, that was morally reprehensible. He got a number, he got better, he, he worked on himself, he got better, he got free. Maybe, maybe the answer to this is MT gets a really fucking big number. <laughs> um, I don't know. But if they do something like that, and they acknowledge that she's made a lot of bad choices here, then I'll be okay with it. But if they ignore all that next week, uh, in, next, uh, next week, in, uh, you know, the next episode, then we've got more of a problem. Um, for me, personally. Because um, I just, yeah. And it's a shame, because it, it won't be, it's not show-breaking or anything. It's not like... It won't turn my review from a positive one to a negative one, but it's 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 a bigger mark against it than I was hoping for at this stage. Um, the, the season has done nothing but get better and better. Um, but the more I think about this episode, and I've had a while to think about this one, the more I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how I, how I feel about my protagonist being this selfish um, in a show that's been so good at being aware of a protagonist's choices because that must be all they're ever thinking about when they when they write this show because obviously they've got the main characters with the numbers so you have to be constantly tracking what the person is their emotional state is and their, their growth is because you've got to make the number go up and down I've had it hard to believe so I'm going to trust right now that they're dealing with it in the next episode. And therefore it's not a criticism at this point. Um, if it's ignored, I don't know how I'll feel. We'll see. Um, but right now, again, it just it's, it's an incredible show. It's doing some really interesting stuff. Um, and I can't wait to see where it's going, as always. Um, I know I said at the end of every episode, but yeah, that's how I feel. I'm just constantly excited to see more. Um, so yeah, 35 minutes of rambling. Uh, we're going to put an end to it there. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me a lot through all these. Um, for those of you who've watched along, um, and those of you who've watched, literally watched along through like HBO Max and stuff, uh, thank you for that. Um, those of you who are just like watching them silently you know uh, not commenting or anything you know you guys are amazing too anyone who's interacting with the videos of course thank you so much for anyone who's commented or liked or anything like that um i should always i'm supposed to say in all these videos like subscribe like and subscribe and comment and all that stuff because it brings me up the algorithms and more people see these videos uh, which is you know i definitely should be doing because this second set of uh in <laughs> rewind reviews is uh not rewind reviews rambling reviews is definitely not performed quite like the first set did um but uh, I don't want to bombard you guys with that stuff. But if you can do it, obviously, you, know, you all know it helps. So feel free to like and all that jazz um, and share. Um, but yeah, I've had, a, I've had a really great time with these. One more left. Let's see where it goes. So yeah, thank you very much for, uh, for watching. And I'll see you guys in two days' time for the very final episode of uh, Book 2, The Number Car.